fundamental of physics lab, uh, phase 212, so uh, physics lab one. Uh, today we'll do experiment number two, which is uh, moment and angular uh, moment and angular momentum. In this experiment, the objective of this experiment is to uh, finally we have to find the moment of inertia of this uh, disk. So here we have a disk. We have a rotary with three radius, uh, R1, R2, and R3. We have a hanging mass of 11 gram. We have a frictionless pulley, a trigger, and a uh, fork light barrier. As well, we have a blower, air blower, and we will see why we are using an air blower later on. Uh, so the problems that we we have to uh, to face in this experiment is to find uh, angular velocity, the angular acceleration, and the moment of inertia of the disk. So by uh, using the 11 gram hanging mass, uh, we make sure that we have the cord is totally horizontal and it is on the frictionless pulley. So we have the cord uh, attached to R1, the rotary R1. So we are applying the tension force uh, at 1.5 centimeter from uh, the axis of rotation. The cord, we have to make sure that the cord is totally horizontal and it is on the frictionless pulley and not uh, on the metal here. So the cord is on the frictionless pulley. As well, uh, during the setup of the experiment or uh, while setting up the experiment, we have to, uh, to make sure that uh, plates, which has a, rate, a, a width of 15 degree or 0.26 radiant is uh, on 180 degree or half or pi half of 2 pi so 180 degree with a light barrier so why at, at pi because during the experiment we need to find the time t the time t needed by the plate to go from the initial position we need to find the time t needed by the plate to go from the initial position uh, till it do a pi rotation so <coughs> that's why we put the plate parallel with the light barrier with pi 180 degree and here we have a, uh, the trigger to, to make sure that initially it is stopped. Using the light barrier, we need to find the time delta t. Delta t, which is the time needed by the place to pass in front of the laser light. So delta t is the time needed by the plate to pass in front of the laser light. Yes. If we move the trigger and we let the disc to rotate, as you can see here, we do not have a rotation. We do not have a motion of the disc. That's become from uh, the friction existing from the support. And that's why we are in need to use a air blower. We turn on the air blower. For the kilometers. We turn on the air blower and as you can see the motion stopped since the air blower is reducing the friction coming from the support of the disc so I will make sure to we'll go back to the initial state we have the plate at 180 degree from the light barrier <coughs> so the light barrier will give us the time delta t and using our cell phone 
Stopwatch. And we must use our cell phone to find uh, the time needed by the plate to go uh, or to travel pi, 3 pi, and 5 pi, and 7 pi. Since during the experiment, since during the experiment, or what they ask us to do, is to find the time t needed by the plate to travel pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, and 9 pi. And instead of doing the experiment at each time to repeat from the initial state, we will use the cell phone and the option of lap. So lap 1 will be the time needed by the plate to travel a pi. Lap 2 will be lap 1 plus lap 2 will be the time needed from the initial point to travel 3 pi. Lap 1 plus lap 2 plus lap 3 will be the time needed to travel 5 pi and so on. So instead of using a, a stopwatch, a normal stopwatch, we will use our cell phone which reduces uh, the time needed by the experiment. So we start the stopwatch. Uh, once the rotary is uh, free to move, we turn on the air blower. One, two, three. So here we have lap one, lap two, lap three, lap four, and lap five. You can see for lap 1 it's 9.54 uh, seconds, for lap 2 it is the addition uh, but uh, we can find the total uh, value 14.55, for lap 3 it's 18.06 and so on by doing uh, lap 4, lap 5 and so on. So our mobile phone uh, gives us directly the addition uh, or the final value for lap one lap. From the light barrier, uh, we see that the three is uh, all values of delta t. At each time, delta t is uh, decreased because the uh, rotation become faster. So the time needed by the plate to pass in front of the laser light is less from the previous value. For the values that we got for R1, which is equal to 1.5 cm, so the cord is at 1.5 cm from the axis of rotation, uh, we find the value of T uh, for pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, and 9 pi, and the value of delta T uh, also for pi, 3, 5, 7, 9 pi. For R1, we have to repeat the experiment three times in order to find the average of angular uh, velocity. But here, uh, for the first value of the angular velocity, omega, we can find it using the equation, which is delta t over delta theta over delta t, which is equal to 0.2618 divided by delta t. So 0.2618 divided by 0 0.313, 0 0.2618 divided by 0 0.173, and so on. And as we can see, the values of omega increase uh, from pi to 5 pi, 7 pi, and so on. So the values of omega increase, and uh, this is normal since we have a constant angular acceleration. Constant angular acceleration uh, coming from, we have a constant hanging mass, 11 gram. So this 11 gram is doing a tension force on the cord and this tension force is also applied to the rotary of the disc. And since the tension is uh, constant, sum of forces, uh, Newton seconds law, sum of forces is constant and then the acceleration is constant as well. And since we have a constant acceleration, constant positive acceleration, the angular velocity will increase function of time. And that we can see clearly in the table that omega has increased function of time 
from 0 0.83 to 2.56 uh, radiant per second. Now, uh, as I said before, we have to repeat the experiment for R1 three times. After doing the three times of, uh, for R1, we have to uh, move the cord from R1 uh, to R2 and then to R3. To move it, so I will do it quickly. Okay, so here and then we rotate the disc and thus the cord is on R2. So the tension force will now be applied at 3 cm from the axis of rotation. For R3, we put it on the third disc and then we rotate. As we can see that by changing the position of the cord from R1 to R2 and to R3, uh, the position or uh, the cord uh, will not be the same. So at each time we have to make sure that the cord is totally horizontal by maybe adjusting the position of the pulley and to put the cord on the pulley straight forward on the pulley so during the motion the cord will stay on the pulley and will not move to the metal uh, because the metal will uh, do a high friction on the cord and then will affect uh, the results that we got from the experiment so after doing all the calculation and uh, finding the average of uh, omega average for the three radius r1 r2 r3 we start by answering the question and uh, plotting the graph uh, needed so first of all we start by the graph of delta function of time we see that it is a here i show you a the theoretical plot so the plot of the equation and we see that we uh, must have a uh, have a parabola so uh, experimentally we will have a dots all around the blue line so but we uh, what we must what we must draw is a uh, parabola so the best fit or a line that pass by the maximum number of points uh, but the shape should be a parabola. The second graph is the omega verse function of time or omega versus t for the three radius r1, r2, r3. So the blue one is for r1. We see the variation of omega function of time. It's a straight line. Uh, the blue, red one is for r2 and the green uh, line represents the variation of omega function of time for R3. So as we can see from this graph that uh, omega function of time uh, become much bigger when the radius, uh, so it is proportional to the radius. When the radius increase, the omega function of time increase and the slope of the line increase so the slope of the line represent uh, the acceleration so <clears throat> using these three lines the blue one red and the green lines uh, for each one we find the corresponding slope and the slope as i said before it represent uh, the uh, alpha average or uh, the angular acceleration by finding the three values of alpha we go to draw the third graph which represents the angular acceleration function of r so here the blue line uh, represent alpha function of so alpha 1 r1 alpha 2 r2 and alpha 3 r3
So by using the slope of this line, uh, this line, I repeat, it represents alpha function of R. So by finding the slope of this line and equation 2 from the manual, equation 2, which is MGR equal IZ times alpha. So uh, if we write it in uh, another way as alpha function of R, we will find that alpha is equal to MG over IZ times R. So the slope of this line is mg over iz, slope equal mg over iz, and then iz is equal to mg over slope. And that's how we can find the moment of inertia of the disk.